ਸਾਈ ਸੁਣਾ ਅਰੂ ਕਾ ਨਾ ਮਨੇਗਰ ਸੁਮਾਈਆ ਪਰਪਾ ਸੁਸਾ ਦੇ ਕਰੀ ਜਨੀ ਨਗਰਾ ਨੇ ਸੁ ਜੋ ਓਲੰਪਿਕ ਸਰ ਬਗੀ ਯੂ ਬਬਰੀ ਉਸ ਲਾ ਕੁਰਬਾ ਹੋ ਤੇ ਨਗਰਾ ਮਈਆ ਇਨੀ ਲਾ ਬਲਾ ਸਸ ਹੈ was the year Steffi Graf won two tennis championships and also when 29-year-old Maria Pan Perimal became Malaysia's first Paralympic medalist. Saya lagi di Melaka, saya kena demam sakit, saya sakit tu kena polio lah. Okey, you dia mari team manager. Ayu je kan ni orang ke berada juga. Okeylah kita tengok, itu pun bagus juga. Sendiri buat sendiri semua tenis, 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 tenis. Lapan puluh lapan lah, saya pergi Paralimpi di Seoul eh. We are ready to uh, welcome the world uh, to Seoul. Saya menang tu pinggang gangsa tu, saya balik Malaysia. Wah, welcome, very good lah. Macam-macam orang tengah berada, dia take picture semuanya ada. Maunya paper keluar, TV keluar. Saya rasa gembira lah. But in the years since his victory, as Maria Pan's fame faded, so did public support. So umur umur masura habre de kita dah boleh semua lawan lah. Saya di ke komedi sama yang main komedi sama begini kena buang kerja juga. Ini gaman dah cara talun saya tapi dia bagi itu pension aja. Jadi pension memang tak cukup lah sebab memang pension tu belanja untuk family aja. Lepas tu tak lepas saya pun susah juga anak tiga mau pergi sekolah. Ibu bapa dia usulah kurma untuk naik ramaiya. Lalu pipi rumah saya rasa sedih lah juga. Nama sudah bagus tapi life out. Maria Pam is one of an estimated 4.5 million Malaysians living with disabilities a population that's long struggled to achieve economic security. In 1988, the same year Maria Pam took home his first medal, the government made a small move by mandating that 1% of public sector jobs be filled by people with disabilities. But it's had limited impact because today, of the 4.5 million disabled people in Malaysia, less than 0.5% are employed. This 1% quota has been on for many, many years now. At the moment, there is only four ministries that's hit more than one. Senator Datuk Raz Adiba Radzi was paralyzed in 1999 after a series of accidents. My pain from one to 10, it's 10. It's so bad that if I hit my head to the wall, I don't feel that. It was very, very hard because I'm a very active person. I ride Harleys, I do free falls from 10,000 feet. Suddenly I can't do all the stuff, so I went crazy. I just lost it. Being a woman in a wheelchair, most of the time they would expect you to just stay home and not do anything because they prefer you to just stay in and not be a nuisance sort of thing, you know. We're not a nuisance, we're like everybody else. But Senator Datuk Raz Adiba Radzi chose to fight for a change and to make a difference in the lives of disabled Malaysians. Saya Ras Adibarazi, setelah dilantik sebagai seorang ahli Dewan Negara. Being a senator representing the disabled community is not an easy task. I just want to make sure that the future generation of the disabled feel empowered. People's mindset have to change. Discrimination has to be reduced. And people need to be able to look at us and speak to us like we are just like everybody else. Senator Datuk Raz Adiba Radzi regularly takes up the cause of Malaysia's disabled. Most recently, by introducing legislation to an update of the PWDA of 2008, by adding a clause that penalizes employers for failing to comply with the government quotas. We have to make sure that there is a clause that companies and government agencies who do not take us in be penalized. I feel that 1% is too little quite honestly. They should just take from that 1% and just keep on hitting and hitting and going 10%, 20%, you know. We cannot rely on the government. We need to work as a team. The private sectors have to come in and support as well. Senator Datuk Raz Adiba Radzi represents the interests of disabled people and 
works towards growing awareness about the community and how they are marginalized even before they enter the workforce. And most of the time, this means relying on the private sector to step up and make that difference. Even we have trained our individual with Down syndrome, there are still no job opportunity given by the government to support them into employment. 26-year-old Alia has Down syndrome and works at the Tasca Anak Anak in Putrajaya as a teacher's aide. Nama saya Alia. Nama saya dua puluh enam. Alia has been working in uh, Tasca Anis for two years. Her role is to help the teachers to cater for the children aged four and below. She does some massage, some exercise, flash cut, and she helps the teachers to feed the children. I feel there's a need for us to start opening up centres to get all the individuals with Down syndrome opportunity to be trained and to start a working life. Hannah Zan has spent many years training young people with a range of abilities to help them find jobs. But no matter how much each private citizen does, and regardless of the 1% quota, there remains a dire need for bigger infrastructural changes at a national level. This is where we have to fight. We are the ones who advocate our children because they can't advocate for themselves. We never stop telling the government, look, we mean serious, we are hands-on, and we want government to see that uh, we are successfully doing what is best for Down syndrome. It's the people themselves who have become activists on their own behalf and to try to raise awareness and push for change. But this is extremely difficult when there's also limited access to education. Despite the fact that I have a law degree, I have a certified advocate and solicitor, there's still a discrimination. People think that I can't do anything. What else I should prove to them that? Many activists believe that the 1% policy does not go far enough because the workforce isn't the only institution that is closed off to the disabled. There are also issues with access to education and training. It was uh, really horrible. There was no awareness, no reasonable accommodation, not a good attitude among the students and the staffs in the campus. A group of students actually took the initiative to gather all the disabled students in one group so that the voice of the students will be heard. I asked for RAMs, for accessible toilets, for a bigger room for the disabled students. But even for those few disabled Malaysians who have navigated an inaccessible education system and attained degrees, finding employment remains difficult. I'm a qualified lawyer and they refused me for a job. They said that we don't have the good facilities for the disabled staff in the office and in the courts. It was really frustrating because they refused me for a job due to the pathetic reasons. It's not just a lack of accessible facilities within the workforce, but also a lack of basic infrastructure that prevents the 1% employment quota from being met. As a disabled person, it's not easy getting around in the city. Pavements are badly maintained. The lifts are not working. So I'd rather stay at home. The accessibility in the cities, yes, it's improved, but it's still not as how we expect it to be. The municipalities have to work really hard. If I go out sometimes, right, the curbs are this high. If I'm alone, I'm going to tilt back and fall and hurt myself and probably die. In the rural areas, my friends suffer. That's why most of them stay home. The 1% policy for the employment of the disabled was a well-intended plan set up many years ago, but it has yet to achieve its goal, because disabled Malaysians simply do not have access to the same education as able-bodied citizens. Though many individual activists are working towards positive changes, large-scale infrastructural changes will need to be made at a grassroots level in order to achieve equal opportunities for the disabled. I aspire to see Malaysia to be a disabled friendly country. We need to embrace, we're just like everybody else. Here, we call ourselves kurang upaya. Some people say kurang upaya means less. But some people use as kelainan upaya, differently abled or not differently abled. We're human just like you. We just have a bit of thing which is not like you. 
but we have a lot of ability more than you, more than you can ever imagine.